Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons and daughters of God. What does that mean? I mean, really? What is a peacemaker? Does that mean you rush in and you try to find a resolution for fights and difficulties between friends, family members, business? What are we talking about here? Well, hopefully I'll be able to give you an overview on this. Not a lot of people are going to like this. Most of you are going to go, Ugh, I don't want to do that. I can't do that. I have my principles. First of all, we have to make peace within ourselves. If I'm not at peace with my own elements, the elements of my humanness and the elements of my divine, I'm never going to find inner peace. Greg is a conglomeration of a lot of things that are at odds with each other. He's always at odds with himself. He can see right and he can see left. He can see up, he can see down. He believes in this in one moment and that in another. He's all about uh, conflict and contrast. He's convoluted and always in fear. And that's just the state of his humanity because he lives in his genetic heart. That's what he does. But there is another side to us that can live simultaneous to this part of us that is what I call the warring part of my life that can live in perfect silence. It's like a, a tornado. In the middle of the tornado is perfect silence, perfect calm. And that's exactly what the Master is talking about. You can live in that perfect calm, that perfect simplicity, while everything else around you is in chaos. It can be done. We saw it at the crucifixion of Jesus. We saw it with oh, all sorts of uh, people who are very interesting, like Gandhi. We saw it with him. Anwar Sadat, we saw it with him. We see it with Socrates. People who have their humanity and it's being threatened, and yet there's this calm inner peace within them. That's the peacemaker. And how does that happen? By not trying to perfect the human and make it into something it's not. You're going to have to be willing to sacrifice what the human wants for the sake of inner peace. And if you are willing to do that at all, it will be because you've understood what it means to be poor in spirit, to, to mourn, of course, to have remorse for your life, to be able to understand the nature of what it is to be teachable, meek, and to be able to go into something more powerful through the idea of concentration, focus, meditation. And now we get down to the M word that nobody likes to talk about. What is meditation? What are we doing when we're meditating? Most people are just trying to calm down their psyche. They're trying to calm down and focus on something to relieve their emotional attachment to drama and fear and anger and hate. And that just doesn't work. You will find that your human side can never be in meditation. Actually, what real meditation is about is about bridging yourself to the other shore that lives within you, the shore of inner peace. It means you come to a place inside where you realize you can't control everything in your life. In fact, you can't control anything in your life. Meditation is the awareness to sit detached from the idea of believing that there is a happy, perfect life out there and you deserve to have it. When a person is willing to meditate without the need to have confrontation with their thoughts and their emotions, they begin to feel that overwhelming sense of inner peace. It is such an integral part of my life, no matter what is going on. Greg, Greg freaks out. Greg has his ups and his downs. Greg has his beliefs. Greg has his stuff over and over. Greg is doing this and Greg is doing that. I'm very aware of it. It's out the corner of my eye though. I know what his mischief. I know what he's up to. But I'm not going to go over there and try to calm him down, to soothe him, or to tell him he's wrong, or to tell him he's right. It is not my job. I don't see that as important. What is important? To be at peace within myself 
And to do that, it isn't about coming to conclusions about my life. The more you are in conclusion about your life, the more you believe there's a beginning, a middle, and an end to any thought you have, the more you believe that thoughts will bring you to the ultimate conclusion of any aspect of your life, the more you're going to find that impermanence steps in and a great deal of convolution begins to evolve out of you. This convolution makes for war with my elements and I'm fighting myself. I'm not seeing the bigger picture. I've lost the bigger picture. And I'm merely fighting for the idea of what seems significantly fair and right to me, which may not be fair and right at all. In fact, frankly, there is no fair or right at all. I hope you found the uniqueness of my message here on Aspire and that you will help sustain our effort both on radio and here on TV to keep Aspire on the air, to keep it serving humankind. We need your sponsorship to do this. Your sponsorship is what allows us to be here and to serve humankind the way we do. If you're interested, go to the website at Aspire.org and go take a look at support. I deeply appreciate it. Now back to Aspire. An authentic peacemaker is not a person who's willing to hold their opinions, no matter what they are, for the sake of their pride and their vanity. An authentic peacemaker is someone who is willing to give up their opinions and no longer be insulted by whatever's going on because the idea of allowing peace to enter into a situation or within themselves is more important than holding an opinion that has nothing to do with the meaning of a person's life. If I do not find the meaning of my own existence, both in this world and in life itself, I will never want to have peace. I will say that my principles are more important and my opinions reflect those principles and I will not budge. And this is why we never find peace on this earth and why Jesus even said there will always be wars and rumors of wars here on this earth. And there will be because our pride is attached to our opinions. As long as I carry an opinion, I will be insulted. Immature people love to be insulted. And they look to be insulted if you don't agree with them if you don't synchronize with the way they are thinking or their emotionality, then they think that you're wrong. And what basically happens is they realize how foolish it is to hold this opinion, but they can't let it go because their pride is more important than their heart. Blessed are those who have a heart. They are the ones that see God, remember? They are the ones that recognize the pure in heart experience is that of not holding a judgment towards another person, but rather to initiate compassion, compassion towards myself and others. I have to work with all sorts of different people. Um, my retreats, my workshops, my counseling, everything that I do, I'm working with people who have the opposite end mentality, as I call it. They may be seeking a philosophy or some kind of understanding about what it means to be authentically spiritual, but to give up an opinion, a cherished one. What is your most cherished opinion about anything, about anyone? Are there people in your life that have hurt you and you say, they are bad people? Or there are people that have helped you and they're the good people. What is your most cherished opinion? How do you know you're right, quote unquote? How do you know you're holding the most loving presence towards another person? How do you know? Because your emotions tell you so? Because your mommy and daddy told you so? How do you know about anything that is meaningful? You don't. You have to stay open-ended. Everything in life is in a flux. Everything is changing. The person that was your enemy now, maybe in years to come, you'll find out was your best friend and really was helping you, but you couldn't see it because Maybe you and I were too opinionated to see it. 
too engrossed in our own ideas of right and wrong, good and bad. Self-righteousness is a very sick disease. And people work their whole life to be self-righteous so they don't have to be questioned. So they don't have to question themselves. And wherever these people go and whatever they're doing, they bring conflict to every situation they're in. I've seen it in my work. I've seen it with my students. Heck, I've even seen it with myself. So I understand this vividly. When a person makes love more important to them than the conflict of being self-righteous, they put aside the feudal, the mundane, the pedestrian mentality, the minutia that we love to be in, and we start to enter into a phase of consciousness. When I'm in consciousness, and Greg can stay over here, and he is not perfected, or I'm not trying to perfect him, all of a sudden, a new presence enters in. It's like a breath of fresh air. You start breathing the air that is love. You start feeling the sense of the heart. Your intuitive nature starts to build very quickly. And all of a sudden, from out of everywhere and nowhere, you realize holding an opinion is worthless. It is the relationship with another person. It's the relationship you have with life. It's the relationship you have with your awareness that is more important than anything. And that awareness, that relationship, that love is greater than my emotions and how I feel about my emotions through Greg's opinions about what he deems as being intelligent or unintelligent or right or wrong. If I'm not willing to drop any of this, I'm never going to find inner peace. And don't you think that in a funny kind of way, that's what we're looking for. We just want to be at peace with ourselves, peace with our life, peace with the whole thing, where we go into a sense of non-conclusion about anything. I have to be not exclusive like I'd like to be with people, but inclusive. I can find inside anyone that which lives within them they may not know it's there, they may not recognize it, but that which is there, which is all about love. And then I respond to that love, I speak to that love, I speak to the more, shall we say, sincere part of their heart and maybe even their soul. If you didn't get everything I was talking about here on the program, you can download the whole series from the website at aspire.org. And for those of you who are sponsors, you can download them for free. The donation for them goes to purchase more airtime of our radio and our TV program, and it is considered, as I said, a donation. Order yours today, and if you're a sponsor, download them right away. Thanks for watching. Now back to Aspire. Ultimately, all of us are responsible for the state of the world the way the world is. These little private thoughts that Greg has and you have and about the people that have hurt us or done us wrong or took away something that was very prideful to us, made us look like a fool or whatever, really don't matter. It doesn't matter. And to get angry and hostile about those kind of things that people have done to us in the past makes it very difficult for us to move forward spiritually in our life. The resentments that you and I hold towards other people that were done years ago, or maybe just recently, only stand in the way of our own awakening. You can't be worrying about the personage of you. It's more important to see the awareness of you in consciousness, to see the bigger picture of yourself in your own life. And I want to talk to you kind of personally about this. I've done counseling for over 41 years and I've talked to hundreds and hundreds of people. I've seen many people get ill, sick, and die because they insisted upon holding a resentment towards someone else that they didn't need to do. And a lot of people, that resentment that they have towards that other person is their own fault. They did it. They did it on their own. 
and they carry this little thing, this little disease inside, and they make themselves out to be a victim, and then they want to be entitled, and it just goes on and on and on, and there's no peace in it. So what is a peacemaker? Why are they called the children of God? Because they are not pouring into the collective unconscious. A peacemaker separates themselves from the collective. They're not pouring in that hate, that fear, that anger that the collective unconscious gathers very quickly. They step aside from it. Most people see the collective unconscious as a trough and they're in there snorting it up all the time. They feel the hatred in the air, the, the tingliness of the drama and the self-righteousness and the wrong and they get off on it. They actually get excited about it and yada da yada da. It's not good. It's not good for anyone. Whenever I've tried to help a person understand, look, forgiveness is the only way. It is the true purpose of your life. And you can't hold resentment towards people for what they've done or said. What good does it do? And by the way, what makes you think you haven't done the same or even worse in your own way? So you can't logically fight with them. You can't reason with them. There's got to come a point where you're tired. Well, what Lotsa said, where you're sick of your own sickness, where you're tired of the whole thing and you don't want it anymore. You're done with the idea of holding hostility towards anyone or anything. In that moment, you become a peacemaker towards yourself and towards others. And the people who like to cause controversy in your life or they are always at odds with you, they may not find you very attractive anymore. They may not want to be around you that much anymore. You, you don't have anything to say. It's like two dogs on a rag. What happens when one dog drops the rag and walks away? It's kind of what it's all about. Peace is the ability and the willingness to sacrifice my own opinion and my own standards of living as I'd like to believe them to be my own integrity for the sake of loving you. No, really loving you and seeing you for what you really are, which is not what you did to me, but what you're struggling with just like I'm struggling with as a human being, as anyone would struggle with. The Beatitudes are about letting go of the human, no longer struggling with the futile, and coming to that place and seeing, you wouldn't be in my life if it weren't my karma to have you in my life, and vice versa. And if you're in my life, maybe I should listen to you, observe you, honor you, respect you. I may not, as a Greg, agree with what you say or do, but why should I cause you problems? Why would I seek vengeance? Because the vengeance I would seek towards you would only add to my karma. And I would never be able to come out of the, the deep despair that karma brings. All of us are terribly unconscious. I see us in a hate coma most of the time. And this hate coma that we like to be in, most people never survive or come out of because they're so busy thinking, well, I have the right to feel this way. When love is more important to you than your hate coma, when you are no longer interested in sustaining your self-righteousness for the sake of pride and you are no longer willing to be insulted anymore by the fact that someone's in your life and they say the things about you they say, you've entered into consciousness and you've taken a huge step forward towards your heart and your soul. You've made it available to yourself to understand the nature of karma what it's really all about, and that it is not working against you, and it's not really working for you. It is the reason you came here on this earth, and you are on what we call the spiritual path. I hope I was able to help you. Please forgive me. Namaste.